Okay, welcome to topic two of the business planning. Uh, topic two at Shaw, anyway, and topic three in the syllabus. But we're going to, and the focus of this topic is uh, at the business plan. Uh, we're going to jump straight to the third chunk because that's in line with the business plan assessment task that you need to carry out. The first, this first video is going to just focus on an introduction to the business plan and the overall planning process, and then subsequent videos will go into detail on things such as <coughs> situation analysis, vision, and then each of the four key areas of organising resources being operations, marketing, finance, and human resources. As a bit of an introduction to the business plan, <coughs> as the name attests to, the, you know, the, a business plan clearly sets out the uh, objectives of the business, sets out some financial goals of the business, um, identifies some of the marketing strategies that m will be utilised. But to actually define what a business plan is, as it says there, it's a written statement of the business's goals and the steps that are going to be taken to achieve them. The most, probably one of the most fundamental and important parts of understanding a business plan is this point here, that a business plan is a living document and it needs to have some flexibility. It can't be rigid in the sense that um, it's whatever's in that plan is set in stone. That plan is sort of an outline of the plan for the business, but it needs to be amenable and it needs to be changed and changeable over time when, uh, for example, if things change in the external business environment, the business is going to need to adapt and therefore it's going to need to change its business plan. Similarly, the business might over you know, the first 12 months, for example, be far more successful or far more unsuccessful than the management and the owners had hoped. Therefore, changes would need to be made to that business plan. And in line with that, this point here is important, that the business plan needs to be regularly reviewed and, and changes made as a result of changes to the internal and external environment. <clears throat> so what's the role of the plan and, and its benefits? Well, you can see that there's, there's six main um, benefits of a business plan. It identifies the business's strengths and weaknesses through a SWOT analysis. It forces the justification of the owner's plans and actions. So by putting down on paper or in a document um, the plans and actions of the owner, it, make, it forces them to justify those plans. It tests the viability of the business. So again, by going through that process of putting together that business plan, it is forcing the owners of that business to test the viability of the business. Because a business owner may well go through this process of us putting together a business plan, get a third of the way through it and think, hang on a second, th this business just isn't viable. You know, from a financial perspective, this business is not going to make money. It's going to cost us too much to uh, market the product, for example. It's going to be too difficult to hire the appropriate staff or it's going to be too hard to crack a particular market that I had in my mind. So therefore, this business is not viable and that business plan process has allowed me, the owner, to identify that. It helps the business to be proactive rather than reactive, so to set goals and objectives for the business in the, in the future rather than reacting to, to the, the business environment. It allows the business to maintain a focus on the set goals and objectives that were identified in the business plan. You know, here are four or three marketing objectives. Let's stick to those marketing objectives and let's focus on the goals that we also set in that business plan rather than just running the business off the cuff and trying to achieve goals here or there uh, as, as we see fit over the life of the business. And lastly, one of the key benefits of a business plan is that it indicates the owner's ability and levels of commitment. Again, by going through that process, it sets in stone the objectives for the owners. Uh, and if there's multiple owners in particular, that makes them all accountable. Um, to the key characteristics of that business plan. A couple of reasons why businesses may fail to go through the planning process. This is out of your textbook. But if we go around in a clockwise direction, uh, there's a rush. Okay, let's get this business started. We've got this great idea. Ah, let's not waste our time. You know, let's not wait a week, two weeks, a month putting together that business plan. That's a waste of time. This is a great idea. It's going to work. Let's get the business going. Okay, that may be one reason why. Another one, it's too expensive. You know, we might, it's expensive in terms of time spent, expensive maybe bringing an external person in to assist with that planning process. 
um, gathering the information, maybe undertaking some market research. It's going to cost us too much. Let's just start this business t t tomorrow. Over here on the third point, you have to be an academic to plan. You know, perception that you need to be a professor at a university or a person who's graduated from university with a degree in business management. Well, no, that's not necessarily the case. The steps involved in a business plan are reasonably straightforward and could be undertaken by most people. If not, <coughs> potentially that's where a consultant or someone could come in and help. Another reason might be I'm only a small business owner. Um, just because it's a small business, I don't need to bother about a plan. Well, no, that's not the case. That business is still trying to make a profit uh, and it definitely still needs a plan. It should have a plan attached. Another reason, why do they tell me that I don't Sorry, what do they tell me that I don't already know? Well, that may be true, but let's get those ideas down on paper. Let's have them written in stone so that you can come back to them, revise them, um, and that those goals are, are visible. And the sixth, another reason might be, uh, we'll just do it later. Okay, we don't have time for it now. We've got to get cracking. We'll, we'll put that plan together later. Okay, again, that might be a reason, but it also could be a reason for failure, failing to put together that, pl that plan and documenting that plan. Okay, just a couple of points to finish up. Some different, no, no two business plans are going to be the same. Therefore, no two plans are the same. Each business is unique. Each plan is going to be unique. A large business, its business plan is going to be very detailed. It's going to have a lot more information in it, probably a lot more financial information, um, a lot more information around marketing strategies, for example, whereas an SME plan often is relatively brief and it's relatively narrow in terms of its circulation. So n the point being, no two plans are the same, um, and it's often dependent on the size of the business as to the detail and the distribution of those plans. Okay, we'll stop there. The next video is going to make a start on the situational analysis.